Hi everybody, we are at the Ootloff Sculpture Garden, situated right across the street from Silver Park, but also in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, this location is named after Charles Ootloff, a sculptor who came to America with his French and German um, parents, um, and who grew up in the midst of poverty, um, but sort of clung to his artistic ability, um, which saw him through some of those tough, troubled times. Um, as an immigrant in the United States, he dealt with anti-Semitic views of others. Um, his parents uh, were migrant workers, so he traveled where they went. Um, but he earned himself a spot at the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, what's interesting, I think you'll see about this location and this sculptor um, and the art pieces that you'll recognize around this beautiful area is that unlike a lot of artists, he has very different styles. So they aren't all um, depicted in the same way. So you'll see different styles of art. What's interesting too about this location is you can see this beautiful kind of backdrop um, that is natural. Um, and it's kind of contrasted by the fact that as I'm standing here, I can hear traffic um, coming by. Mopac is literally not even a mile from where we are. So it's in the midst, it's this sweet little spot in the midst of um, you know a booming metropolis uh, in a downtown area. So we're gonna take you on a tour of um, some of the sculptures. You'll notice that some of what uh, Charles Umlock has created is in response to um, unrest in the world. There are a couple of sculptures that are representative of um, World War II and his response to that. Um, and then just some other um, really beautiful pieces that we'll take a look at. So let's go, let's check them out. So we've taken a little bit of a tour around and each picked one of our favorite pieces. And I think for me, it might be this one. This is Charles Umlauf's sculpture, um, aptly titled Ballerina. I think what I love about it, um, in contrast to many of the other pieces here, is how smooth um, this piece is. But I also love the subject matter. Um, I love that this ballerina is in um, a typical pose, but it also highlights how strong she is. Um, and I also think that they're kind of exudes this confidence, this body confidence, um, knowing the strength and the ability of her physical self um, I think is really amazing. And then if you look at her hair, um, it obviously is not quite um, as smooth as her body, which is totally appropriate. So I don't know. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful piece, um, you know, capturing maybe a, a more private moment um, for her, um, but really beautiful and inspiring to me. and she's my favorite because I'm a child of the 70s and I also wanted to share a little fact about myself when I was your age 14 15 I wanted to be a nun so um, she's special she is in reverence and she's beautiful and she's my favorite so one of my favorite pieces here at the Inlaw Sculpture Garden is this one that's called Hope of Humanity this statue is actually a scale model of the actual sculpture 
which you can find at the Houston Museum of Natural Science in Herman Park in Houston. As part of the process of making the sculpture, the artist made this smaller version first before he made the full-size version. This sculpture is one-third the size of the sculpture you'll find at Herman Park. At Herman Park, the statue is 12 feet 6 inches tall. So, you do the math. How tall is this miniature version? Hey y'all, we're here at the Umlauf uh, Sculpture Garden in the middle of downtown Austin. Um, there's a lot of different sculptures here. Uh, this one right behind me you can see is a bronze statue um, looking at different aspects of refugees. Uh, throughout history you see with the ancient Greeks, the Romans, um, bronze is used pretty often in uh, these cultures to um, create uh, sculptures of you know, events, people, places, things that are going on at the time. Uh, and you can see kind of throughout history how this has remained um, with the bronze statues and how people process the, the things that are going on in their world. Um, so this is one of many examples. Um, this, is one, this one's a little bit uh, more modern to uh, a lot of the other bronze uh, statues throughout the, the, the park here. Um, I'm going to show you guys one of my favorites here in just a second uh, that's way more modern. Um, very cool. And let's, uh, let's go take a look at that. Alright guys, so here at the Umlauf, not everything is created by him. Uh, some of the more temporary exhibits, uh, such as this one right here behind me, one of my favorites uh, that I've seen in here, uh, is way more modern and definitely done by a team of designers that actually won a contest to get it put in here. Um, so as you can see, uh, like I said, very modern. It's a uh, still a very it's called ocular or oculi, uh, but uh, it's a uh, it's a very cool uh, perspective piece um, because any way you look at it, you get a different piece and a different sense of what the artist is trying to tell you. Um, so hopefully, we can get you guys to be able to look through that, and you guys can kind of make up your own idea of what he's trying to get you to see. also built in 1972 and it was on loan at the museum in Rockport, Texas, um, but it was found buried in the rubble after Hurricane Harvey in 2017 and so they were so lucky to find it and one of the bird's wings was destroyed but they repaired it and now they're so happy to have it back. All right, y'all, we are in the middle of downtown Austin at the Contemporary uh, Museum Jones Center. Uh, this is uh, very cool. You can see art on the outside of the building. Um, this is where you would actually uh, see traditional art. Um, and uh, it's, it's an interesting contrast to what else we've seen um, in your other classes. And so part of uh, what is these two art pieces is demonstrating some of the biases that are in uh, some of the systems that we use, like um, if we are creating something in Microsoft, how it will highlight a misspelled word. And these, both of these pieces are examples of names that are more common in um, black culture, both of them uh, not recognized by that system as a word that exists. So that's yeah, part of what the, the artist is pointing out here uh, is the bias uh, and the absence uh, of that recognition of identity since her pieces are all looking at the idea of um, ourselves and our collective identity uh, as people. The exhibit today is one by Deborah Roberts called I'm. She is an Austin native. Um, this is a piece 
that is um, kind of photography based. One of the, the first um, photography exhibits that the Jones has had in some time. And really what she is doing is using collage to kind of express a side um, that perhaps she feels isn't as um, well known, well seen, um, and kind of put out into the world as much. So what you'll notice in these pieces is that they are a combination of photographs that are put together of, of, as well as some of her own um, pieces that she's painted as well. Um, to create a different kind of image. And in doing so, she's giving us an opportunity to see these subjects in a different light than how we would perhaps stereotypically view them. And so you'll see in some of her art pieces, there is some vulnerability in what you're seeing, but there's also some strength that comes out through um, her subjects. And so it's a, a really interesting look at how we um, think about and talk about um, race and how we look at our collective identity. So she's playing with that idea of how you take pieces from different photographs to present a more collective identity, hence the idea of I'm, which of course we know is I am in contraction. So that's what's, what is being um, played with here in some of these beautiful pieces of art. attention to um, some of these works um, with the black uh, background. Um, these are kind of marked some of the more uh, recent works by Deborah Roberts. Um, throughout her work, um, backgrounds are important and she puts emphasis on the background. So in her early works, we saw a lot of white backgrounds and now she's using um, black backgrounds. So when she's making this work, um, I think it's important to think about um, what the white and black backgrounds do for the figures. What does it do formally in terms of visuals? And what does it do conceptually? So what is the idea that maybe those black or white backgrounds um, might be uh, suggesting? is an exhibit by a photographer from Norway. As I was looking at these uh, pictures, I thought, very interesting. Uh, here's one that I, I noticed. I looked at the picture. I didn't really get it. And then I looked at the title. So the title of this picture is Making Mother Unhappy. So I went back to the picture and I looked again, and that's when I noticed the knife in the picture. I completely missed it the first time. But sometimes the title will give you a clue. Why is mother unhappy? I have no idea, but it's interesting to think about. 